Now, a lot of people have asked me in the comments what these are. This is variegated liriope. And you can see I've got them on the border around a lot of my landscape. And they put off this really, really purple flower, purple bloom. Look at that right there, man. Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today. And these are three of my really big crepe myrtles that I have. And I've got one up on the corner of the house. I've got two patio crepe myrtles by the driveway at the end there. And I love crepe myrtles. I love the way they bloom. I love the shape they produce. This is a Natchez, which peels its bark, kind of. You, you kind of get this bark peel from it and exposes new wood under the bark and man it looks really really good i just like that look now one thing you'll see folks do is they'll come in here with chainsaws or axes or a bazooka i don't know what the heck they use but they'll come in here and just whack these things off and leave a bunch of nubs sticking up and it drives me bananas just look at this tree right here look at how good it looks nice and airy and open on the inside and the canopy's kind of covering it and protecting it and look at this this is what a crepe myrtle should look like a little bit of filtered sun the canopy will get kind of really dense and thick and you can see it kind of shades the turf out a little bit and I have the same problem in this one little area every year. I mean, it's not terrible by no means, but it's nowhere near as thick as it is out in the yard. That's because that shade kind of limits photosynthesis on it and it just thins out. It is what it is. So at the base of a crepe myrtle, they're bad about shooting off these suckers. And I just come in here and take my hand pruners and cut them back like that to the ground and a done deal something else they're bad about okay you can see right here i've got an old cut right there i made and what happened was this thing just kind of shot off some new growth right here but i don't want it right here so what i'm gonna do is take these kamikazes right here that's kind of tight in there i'm gonna get in there and clean that up a little bit now, yeah i've got a little bit of an ugly knot right there but on the flip side of this this was a very odd looking branch that just destroyed the entire look of the tree uh, so I cut it off several years ago you can see that's been uh, that's been cut off for a while and I'm okay with that I don't walk around my yard looking at the crepe myrtle and saying oh my god look at that knot on the tree it looks so bad it don't even bother me but what did bother me was the fact that that limb, I'm gonna get out here and try to show you. That limb kind of come up and elbowed out and come straight out this way. So it was kind of hanging like that and it's just, ugh, it's an eyesore. So that's why I cut that off. Something else I'll do late summer, is you can see the canopy of it's a little uneven. It's not terrible because I do this every single summer. I stay on top of it. So it doesn't get too bad but you can see i've got some foliage and a limb hanging down there we got a big one hanging down here a few hanging down here and there nothing major i can probably spend six or seven minutes on this tree or excuse me on the three trees and i can be done with it now that is absolutely strange right there for it to shed in that one long streak hmm now I'm in a predicament I've never seen that before, to be honest with you. This is normal. See the pattern of this right here? All that pattern's normal. That does not look normal to me. See it go all the way up in one single straight line. Well dang, that's just another good reason to pay attention to you crate myrtles and manage them uh do a little maintenance on them so you can see stuff like this so tree people that are watching this video i need your help now because i have absolutely no clue what that is and you can see it goes all the way up 
all the way up that limb. Holy cow. And then it comes all the way down. Look at this. And there, that hasn't shed yet, but it goes all the way down to the base of the tree. Huh. Tree people, hook a brother up. Tell me what in the world is going on. Because I have absolutely no idea. Now, typically, I would bring a ladder out here and get up on a ladder, get everything nice and neat and even around the bottom of the canopy. Uh, but I'm tired. Long day at work today, and I just don't feel like climbing up and down a ladder. So, I got me a normal old broom. Mine's a little jacked up right here. Bent, but it's nothing wrong with it. Still sweeps just fine. And what I'll do... And this particular broom is kind of angled one way. You'll see it. I don't know why it is. It just is. It's not. It's bent that way. But the actual broom itself is angled for whatever reason. I don't know. But I'll use this small end right here because it kind of acts like a little hook. And what I'll do is take and grab the tree limb and pull it down with that hook. If I need to kind of hold the broom out a little bit. So it stays wedged up in that uh, little V shape there. Then I can pull it down like so to get my hands on it and cut it. Now you can see right here, I've got a larger limb. That thing's probably big around as a quarter probably. And it's just doing me no good. It's hanging down, it's in the way. Um, if I cut this off, it's actually gonna help me to even up the canopy on this big tree. So I'm just gonna cut that off right there. Now of course my hand pruners aren't big enough to cut that so I use my little wow saw right here it's just a little hand saw that folds up really neat really handy locks in place kind of like a locking blade knife or something now one thing you want to be very very cautious about is when you reach up here and you grab a limb and you pull it down don't you pull it down too hard because that crepe myrtle will snap off. That limb will break. So you can see when I'm doing that, I'm coming out toward the end where it's a little flimsy and then pulling it down to me like that. And I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on it and I'll give it a little nip nip. And there you go. There's a good one right here. Watch this. Pull that down like that. Get my hands on it. Snip. Now none of this is done for the health of the tree, okay? I'm not, I don't know if I'm making it grow more or not more. I really don't care to be honest with you. I just want it to look a certain way. Uh, and by raising this up a little bit, raising the canopy up, I'm letting a little bit of sunlight come in here because aeration and seeding, uh, I'll be doing my yard about middle of September. And of course I'll film that, show that to you. But raising this canopy will also allow a little bit of extra sunlight in here and make my trees look better because they have that nice, neat, even appearance.
All right, so there you go. Like, subscribe, and tell all your buddies. I appreciate you watching. And I know you're used to saying, well, there's a link in the description. Well, I can't link you up to the broom. I got a link for those. You know, this is a pretty unique broom. It's been beat and battered, and it's been up, and the kids have used it, and they probably whopped each other over the head with it, and it ain't no telling where this broom has been, uh, but it still works. It still sweeps pretty good, and I recommend a good broom to anybody. Check you later.